Hi. So I've been thinking a little bit more about one of the questions that was asked in our Q&A a while back concerning what happens after death. On further consideration, the, the answer that I gave at the time was not actually quite right, I don't think now, with further thought, and also was not very clear. Uh, I did say at the time this is quite a complicated topic. So having read a bit further, I thought I'd have an additional go at answering the question a bit more thoroughly. What happens after we die? Do we go to heaven straight away? This is what the questioner asked us. She said, I thought Jesus was going to raise the dead when he returns. Could you clarify? So let's just try and clarify this uh, and give it a little bit more time. The Old Testament writers seem to assume that all, whether wicked or righteous, who die, go to the place of the dead. Their bodies go into the ground, but the soul or the spirit of the person, the intangible part of us, goes to a place called Sheol in Hebrew, the place of the dead. That word occurs dozens of times in the Old Testament, and usually it's described as a place that is down into the earth. So take, for example, when Jacob uh, hears reports of the death of Joseph. You remember when the brothers come and say he's been mauled by a wild beast? This is what we read in Genesis chapter 37. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, No, I shall go down to Sheol to my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Uh, and you'll, you can read many such accounts uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, sometimes the word is translated as the grave, but the Hebrew word behind it is Sheol. And then in the New Testament, when Jesus tells the parable, you remember, of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16, he paints a picture of this place. The Greek name for Sheol there is Hades or Hades. In the story Jesus tells, we have two compartments described in that scenario in Hades. Righteous Lazarus is described as being with Abraham, whereas the rich man is in torment in a place that actually elsewhere in the Bible gets called Tartarus. Uh, 2 Peter 2 verse 4, if you want to look that up. And separating them, says Jesus, a great chasm has been fixed. So Jesus sees very clearly two compartments there. Now, one would assume then, I think somewhat obviously, that this is not a physical existence, but a spiritual one. And it's in a place of waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for the resurrection. That was the great hope of the Old Testament, the resurrection. And now this seems to be the Jewish understanding of what happens after death. But here's where we can say a bit more, because the death and resurrection of Jesus changes everything in the Bible. It's quite wonderful. So to talk about the New Testament expectation of what happens after death, we need to look at a number of key passages and put the picture together from them. First of all, if you want to turn with me, I'll put it up on the screen too. Uh, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. It reads there, Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we're at home with the, in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due for him, for the things done whilst in the body, whether good or bad. OK, we'll stop reading there for a second and we'll look again later at the end of that reading. But just at the beginning part, let me just make a few comments. Paul indicates here that there are really only two states for the believer to be in. Did you see them? 
we are either at home in the body and away from the Lord, verse 6, or we are away from the body and at home with the Lord. Do you see? So we're either alive here on earth in our bodies, getting on with serving God, or we're separated from our bodies and present without our bodies with the Lord. This is what we mean when we say that Christians who die go to heaven. Our bodies go into the ground, physically into the ground. We go to be with the Lord. I want to make that very, very clear. It would seem then that the righteous now do not go to Hades, to Sheol. At least their spirits don't. The realm of the dead. Why is that? Well, I think the answer is in our next passage, and it has, of course, to do with Jesus's death and resurrection. Take a look now at Ephesians chapter four, verses seven to ten. Paul writes, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So here Paul's quoting from Psalm 68 and he's applying it prophetically to Jesus. Gifts, says Paul, are given to the church from the exalted and the ascended Christ, who, when he ascended, look at the verse, led captives in his train. What's Paul talking about? Well, I think the following verse clarifies it. Verse nine, Paul says, what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? On the cross, Jesus won the greatest of victories. He conquered Satan, sin and death. And when his body died, he, very much alive in his spirit, descended into Hades, into Hades, into Sheol, the realm of the dead. And he proclaimed his victory there over all who were held there. When he rose again... This was the point when he liberated the souls of the righteous whom he raised to be with him in heaven or paradise. The unrighteous, the wicked captives held in torment, however, were not liberated, but remain in the realm of the dead. This is still the fate of those who die even today, rejecting Christ. They are, like the rich man, in torment, awaiting the final judgment. We usually think of that particular state as hell, but that's not quite right, although it's along the, the, sort of the right lines. So let's add another piece to the picture, and this time from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Paul writes this, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who've fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Here, Paul is talking about the return of Christ. And we see there are, again, two possible situations we might find ourselves in on that day at that time. We might have already died, says Paul, and gone to be home with the Lord. 
or we might still be living when Christ returns. Of the former, those who have, as Paul says, fallen asleep, a synonym for dying, and are already with the Lord, Paul says that he will bring them when he returns. Paul's purpose in writing this little section here is to assure the Christians that he's writing to that dying will not put you at some kind of a disadvantage where you know you must have to go to the back of the queue behind those who are lucky enough to have survived until Jesus comes back. He assures them, and here's the main point really of the verses, he assures them that we will all meet the returning Jesus together. Those who come with him will be the first to be resurrected. That is, they will receive their resurrection bodies. And after that, those who remain, who are still alive, will also be transformed. You can read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. And we will also receive our resurrection bodies and then together we'll meet the Lord in the air. And I assume at this point, the great final day of judgment happens. And all of us will stand before Christ as judge. As Paul wrote to the Corinthians in that, those first verses that we looked at from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Did you catch what he said? Paul says in verse 9 there, so we make it our goal to please him whether we are at home in the body or we are away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive what is due him for the things done whilst in the body, whether good or bad. Those who are in Christ need not fear this day of judgment because our names are written in the book of life. And the righteousness of Christ has been credited to our account. We shall reign with the Lord forever in the new creation, in resurrection bodies. That is the heavenly hope of the Christian. But John writes about the fate of the wicked also in Revelation chapter 20. He says this in verse 13. The sea gave up those who were dead that were in it and death and Hades, Hades, gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death, and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So it is on this final day of judgment that the ultimate sentence is passed and executed. This is when the wicked are finally cast, along with death and Hades itself, into hell, the lake of fire. That's really what we mean by hell, ultimately. Well, that's a lot to take in there. Do have a think about it. I hope it's been helpful to you and, and do get in touch if you've got any further questions or you wanna make a comment or you want any clarification. Have a good day.